Imagine knowing that everything you experience is a reality you are creating. Imagine finally understanding that with the right belief system, you never have to be sick. Imagine never having to worry or have fear about anything because you are in control of it all. What will you do when you find out this is all true and what you have been told to believe is false? It is time to learn the truth. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another edition of Reality Changer Radio. It is Tuesday, October 15th, and uh, tonight we're going to talk about everyday life. Uh, The ups and downs, stuff that happens to you, signs that uh, come to you to let you know that you still need work on certain areas. And what I'd like to start out with is the concept that Every day, 24 hours a day, you create your reality. You are the one responsible. And I know that's a hard concept for a lot of people to wrap their heads around, especially when I say that there's no other person to blame for your crappy day at work or somebody cutting you off at the grocery store or whatever your crappy day looks like. There's also no one else to congratulate when you're having an awesome day because it's you doing that, okay? The single most important thing for you to understand is that no one can control your reality. You can allow them certain say in things that you do And by your perception of what they do, your reality changes. But you have chosen to change your perception of what they do. I want you to think for a minute about people that cut you off at the grocery store. Let's say you're going to the parking lot and you find a really cool spot and somebody just cuts you right off. You know, and the first the first reaction, because we've been taught this with the old school programming, is, you bastard. Look at him just cut me right off. He didn't even care. He did not even care. The question you have to ask yourself is, did he see you? His reality is, I'm going to get a parking spot no matter what. Now, this goes really deep, and it goes into quantum physics and the whole mess, but... Did he really see you? You may not be in his reality, even though he's in yours. And you say, well, why? Why is that? Well, he may be in yours to point you back inside from the external so that you can take another look at yourself and wonder why you're getting upset at people. He also may be there to point you back inside Because there's some limiting belief stopping you from getting what you want at a certain moment. Everything is a sign. You have to understand that everything is a sign. Every time that you get yelled at or get praised or somebody does something wrong that you you think is wrong, that's a sign. And one of the things that's happening today um, with the so-called bad economy... And again, that's all in your perception of it. Is that people, because of the old school programming, have been taught to point fingers when things don't go right. And especially with everything else that's going on today. You know, people want to uh, do legislation and they want to get out and they want to march in the streets and they want to do all this other funky stuff that has nothing to do with the real source of the problem. It's 
putting a band-aid on an open wound. Eventually you're going to bleed out. Because how many marches, how much legislation, how many meetings, how many talks, how many screamings, how many shootings, how many times do we have to repeat the external cycle before, as a community, we finally get it that dealing with issues on the external don't change them. If they change them at all, it's for a short period of time. And then we're right back to where we started. How about that song by The Who? We won't get fooled again, right? It's Listen to that song, okay? It's the same thing. Things are still the same. Because nothing's really changed. We're so focused on the external that we lose sight of what's real and what really matters. Most things don't really matter because they don't really exist. And they don't really exist because all of this is an illusion that we as spiritual beings created. Okay? You have to keep that in mind. This only exists because you created it. You don't like it, and that's fine. And it causes you pain, and it causes you anger, and it causes you to be upset because of your old school programming. Remember the conscious mind and the subconscious mind. You know, instantly you would say, well, I would never choose to do this. I would never choose this kind of life. No, of course not. Not on a conscious level. But your conscious mind is not the one running the show. Let's get over this. The conscious mind is not the one running the show. When you get on Craigslist and you send out 27 applications and you don't hear anything back, the last thing you need to do is to start whining that nobody's responding to you. Nobody's this, nobody's that, nobody's this, nobody's that. The first thing you need to do is start to look inside and tr find out, ask yourself, why is it I didn't want those jobs? Because that's really what's going on. You didn't really want to work there. Okay? And you say, well, you know that. You don't know my story. You don't know my situation. And I would say to you, pull hockey. Because I don't have to be in your situation to know you and what's going on with you. I don't have to be a parent in order to counsel parents on the proper programming in order to make their kids successful and to make their kids awesome manifestors. That's old school programming. That keeps you away from the people who know what they're doing and talking about. And it keeps you isolated. It keeps you inside the box. And the best part for a lot of people who like to control people about you being inside the box is when they keep you ignorant. Because first they make you fearful and they keep you ignorant with your fear. So you're inside the box because you're fearful and you're ignorant at the same time. So you spin and you spin and you spin and you spin. You're fearful and ignorant, fearful and ignorant. And the more ignorant you get, the more fearful you get. Because you've been taught not to go to, the, go to these experts or these people that understand what's going on. No, 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 no. You don't understand my situation. No, you're wrong. Because we're all doing the same thing. The, the external is our creation. And for some reason, the conscious mind wants to make everything so difficult, but it's not. Let me lay it out for you, folks, because it's, it's black and white here. It's not rocket science. The same programming affects and changes that happen when you're a little kid, happen when you're an adult. The same methods of programming and deprogramming and reprogramming, those same methods are the same ones you would use for a child, or an adult. They are the same ones you would use if someone wants a new relationship or wants a new car. You see, this is the thing that I keep trying to tell everybody. 
There's not 8,000 different things that you need to learn in order to have an awesome life that you deserve. There's not. That's the external. The external is complicated. The internal, your spirit, is not that complicated. And what's going on here is we've made it, we've made it a notion of complication and we've applied it to everything because we've become in love with our creation, the external. So when you're sitting there and you're trying to figure out why you got, quote unquote, lied to on an interview, you're no different than the kid who busted his ass and stayed up late every night and didn't go out and party and still got a C on his report and wants to know why the teacher doesn't like him. You're no different. It's the exact same situation. You're working so hard at the wrong thing to achieve what you want. It's the same thing. Just like if you've got your job, okay, and you're, you're busting your hump, and you're working overtime, and you're doing everything exactly by the book and all this other stuff, and what? Nobody recognizes you, and you still get yelled at. It's the same thing. You're working way too hard at the wrong thing to achieve what you want. And all of that comes from old school programming. All of it comes from the concept that you have to do A in order to get B. And that you, you need to not concern yourself with B, concern yourself with A. The problem is, B is where you should be putting your energy. Not A. How many of you out there would love it if you could get everything you want and work half the time? Hmm? Tell me you wouldn't do that. How many people out there would love to be able to live a different life other than money is the key to happiness? Because as I've told you before, you can look at a lot of people who have a ton of money, a lot more than you, and you can find many, many different ways that they are not happy. Divorces and lawsuits and, and on and on and on. Bankruptcies and they have to come back from it. Who wants to come back from it? Oh, goody, you can come back from it. Well, who wants to? Stop it. Just because you can doesn't mean you should. I mean, think about it, everybody. You got $10 million or a billion dollars and... And because you're still of old school programming, stuff doesn't go right and you end up bankrupt. A lot of people, especially self-made millionaires, would go, ah, oh, that's nothing. I'll have that back in a year or two. Why should you have to? Why should you? Why don't you stop using the old school programming, make your money once, and keep it? What? What? That's how that's that's how important it is for everybody listening around the world to catch on to the concept that every one of your situations is linked to a similar source of of uh, problem, okay? And it's because of your old school programming. You're taught that you have to look at this in order to have this. And if you're not looking hard enough, then you're taught to worry. And then you start worrying about not having this. Well, guess what? Here's a clue. Everything you worry about is going to happen. Everything you don't worry about is going to happen. Okay? So every time you're worried, let's say, you know, oh, I'm not going to be able to pay the bills. I don't know how I'm not going to pay, pay the bill. Guess what? You're not going to pay the bills. Or something's going to fall in the in the way and you, your conscious mind is going to justify everything and make you the victim once again. And then the cycle repeats itself. And then you say to yourself, there's no way out. You feel desperate. You feel trapped. You feel alone. There's no way out. I'm telling you, there's a way out. And it's the same way for somebody on Skid Row and it's the same way for somebody in Bel Air or Beverly Hills. Because we are all the same. No one, regardless of their station or status, has more power 
than the other person. And no one has different sources of problems than the person next to them. If somebody's having a problem with A and somebody's having a problem with B, the problem for both of those people come from the same source. It's their belief system and emotional blockages. That's where it is. And it could also be the fact that they refuse to believe they're in control. You know, people, I, I see it all the time on, on Facebook and other places. People go, oh, you know, I got lied to in an interview and I'm so desperate and I'm this and I'm that and I, I, I got to have a job and blah, blah, blah. And it's just, wow, get a hold of yourself. Do you not want to control what's going on? Because you can. Do you want to live the next 50, 60 years from paycheck to paycheck and scraping every dime and worrying about this and worrying about, and oh, let's, and let's take that one step further and then worry about if something happens, how am I going to pay the hospital bills? Guys, girls, we have to change this. There's no reason to have hospital bills. And for the same reason you wouldn't have hospital bills is the same reason you wouldn't have all the other crap in your life. You wouldn't have people lying to you, and you wouldn't have this, and you wouldn't have that. And it is the exact same reason that you would have stuff. Because your emotional... Esther Hicks puts it really nice, your emotional guidance system. Your emotions and your feelings are going to dictate the energy that you send out into the universe. And that energy is used by the law of attraction. And that is going to attract more and more of what you put out there. I don't know how much clearer I can make this for you guys. If you're in a crappy mood, you're going to have a crappy day. End of story. If you're in a little bit of a crappy mood there's a good chance that your day could turn out to be really nice and you, and you change your tune, okay? But understand that you can control that. And if you're having issues with family members or relatives of any kind or your significant others or spouses or co-workers or any of that, understand a couple of things. Number one, no matter how you feel, whether they're right or wrong, you're never going to change them, okay? You can only change your perception of them. So now once you wrap your head around that, now you have to understand the concept that there is no right or wrong. It is what it is because you have created it. Now, if you don't like it, it doesn't mean it's wrong. It just means that it's something that you don't want. Right and wrong is... Uh, God, I could go hours on this broadcast for this. It's all part of the old school program. There is no right and wrong. Right and wrong belong with the finger pointing. Well, he lied to me and she cheated on me and this one, that one, this one, that one. That's all. It's all crap. It's all crap. It's all crap because you control it all. By default or deliberately. And that's that's a commitment you have to make to yourself. If you're not happy with the way your life is, you have to make the commitment to change. That's like I said in my last broadcast, how committed are you? What are you worth? Okay? So anybody that's having an issue with you, it's you having the issue. Because they don't really exist unless you want them to. This, this gets into the quantum level here. These people only exist in your reality because you feel there's a need for that. Now, on a consci- I'm not talking about a conscious level here. So, you know, hold, hold your judgments here. Because those judgments come from the conscious level. And I'm not talking about the conscious mind. It has nothing to do with this. It's only an observer. Okay? 
It's an observer. It's the control panel. It's the computer terminal. And the subconscious mind, which is really running the show, is the program. You don't like what's on TV? You change the channel. You don't like what's on your computer? You don't like the way the computer program's running? You change the program. Okay? So you have to understand that you can make yourself happy or you can make yourself sad using the same methods. Everything that is done on a plus can be done on a minus using the exact same techniques, only reversed. So however you make yourself happy, you can use that same technique to make yourself sad. So once you start figuring out how it is that you made yourself uncomfortable, don't think that there's a a separate solution that you have to go find now. No, 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 no. Not at all. Own that realization that you made yourself uncomfortable and become one with the idea of how you made yourself uncomfortable. And then take that how and change the uncomfortable to happy. You know, it's like, let's say you put on the wrong tires on your car. All right, so you want to put the right tires on your car. Well, you're not going to do it a different way. You still have to take those old tires off and put on the right ones. And the way you do that is exactly the same no matter what kind of tires you put on your car. You have to undo the bolts, you have to jack it up, you have to do this, you have to do that, you have to put the other one on, you have to tighten it, blah, 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 the whole thing. The processes that are in place to make you uncomfortable and that make you sad or angry are the same processes you use to reverse those feelings. It's not a separate solution. So once you figure out what you did... You go, okay, now I know how to create an emotion. Okay, so because that's really what we're talking about here. You've just learned how you create that type of emotion. How did I make myself angry? Well, I did this and this. Okay, so now do that and that in a different fashion to make yourself happy. Okay, well, I believe that this and this and this. Fine, then don't believe that. Believe something else. Believe something better. Believe something happier. Okay? And a lot of a lot of your beliefs can be checked out with muscle testing. All right? I use muscle testing a lot in my practice because the body's connected to the spirit and the mind, and the body won't let you lie. The body knows what's good for you because it knows you. You're all connected. It's all one thing. Okay? So with a partner, you can help check your belief systems, okay? What do you believe, you know? And you say it like, okay, I deserve to be rich, you know? And then, oh, your body just double checks that and says, no, you don't. Okay, so now you have a point where you can start drilling down and saying, okay, why don't I deserve to be rich? You know, and it's like peeling back the layers of an onion till you get down to the actual source, Okay. But never lose sight that you're responsible. Now, you could choose, because we all have free will, you can choose not to, in a sense, give a damn. But uh, let me know how that works for you, because uh, if if it's not working now, it ain't going to work until you stop doing it. I mean, you know, hey, how you and how you do one thing is how you do everything. And if you're not ready to make the commitment to change your life, then what? You know? And people will say, well, you know, I don't think that stuff works. Well, what you've been doing so far for the last few years certainly hasn't worked. Aren't you game to try something different? Because what you're doing isn't working at all. And I can give you a list of people to call who have done this stuff and have had successes and would say to you, hey, it works. So don't get so don't get so deep into the box that you can't see there's a lid that you can push off. 
and get in touch with the outside of the box because that's old school programming and more and more we need to address this old school programming because I see so many people you know I, I just having these hard times you know I can't get a raise I can't get a job I can't do this I can't do that and understand folks that all of that negative language is also affecting what happens to you on a daily basis I can't I can't it won't, it won't, it won't. No, you got to stop that. I mean, that's one of the easiest things you can do for yourself. It doesn't even take any time. Let's say, for instance, you say, well, you know, I don't have time to do those meditations and everything, which is what you really should be doing, because like I mentioned in my last broadcast, if you did those for a while, and, and you would have time, because things would get easier. So what? So what? So just start changing the way you talk about yourself. You know? Start start saying all the positive stuff. And it doesn't mean like you're just walking around going, I'm awesome, I'm awesome. And, and you don't believe it. Start believing it too. But if the very least, take words out of your vocabulary like don't and can't and shouldn't and won't. Take those words out of your vocabulary. It's not going to cost you anything, and you're not going to spend any time doing it. Start taking those out of your vocabulary. Think about it when you, when you talk, and listen to yourself. Hear yourself talk. Maybe even just record yourself a couple of times if you're not sure how it is that you're talking about yourself, or talking on a daily basis. You know? Trust me, when, when I say this stuff, I'm talking about every conversation you have about everything. Okay, because it all affects your belief system. Your words have power. The spoken word has power. They all have energy and they all affect your belief system. So let's say, for instance, um, you've got a neighbor across the street. And you say, he's never going to do this. He's never going to do this. He's never going to do this. Well, as far as you're concerned, he's never going to do this. So you're never going to be there or notice it or appreciate it if he does do this because your belief system says he's never gonna okay that's just a small example of a typical conversation you would have about some third party thing you know it could be a store it could be the government it could be anything start taking those negative words out of your vocabulary and when people want to be around you and start doing that stuff just you know hold up your hand be nice as you can and just tell them, look, you know, I, I don't do this anymore. I'm trying to do this new stuff, and I, and I think it's going to work. And if it does work, then I'm just going to not do this anymore. So please, you know, cut me a break, and don't try to get me involved in this negative conversation. And if they like you, and, and, and they're friends, or, or they're, they love you and relatives, or whatever, they will understand. Just be nice about it. You know, you don't have to be an ass. Just be nice about it. And just let everybody know that you're just changing your life right now and that you're going to do things differently. Anger issues, you know, look, you cause it all. Somebody somebody does something bad to you, it's your fault. Okay? I know it's tough to hear, but it's your fault. You did something. You've created something. You need something going on in your life to have those situations happen. They didn't just come out of the blue and go, hey, let's get him. Mm -mm. Doesn't work that way. Okay. So the next time that you think that because of somebody, a, a great example, somebody at work made a decision and now your life is affected by it. Your life doesn't have to be affected by it. Okay. You can manifest an awesome day at work irregardless of the decisions they make because their decisions only affect you if you allow them to affect you. And people say, well, you know, the guy's in charge. So what? So what the guy's in charge? It doesn't mean you have to suffer. See, that's old school programming, folks. 
Just because you're part of the mix doesn't mean you have to be part of the mix. It's much easier to go along with the status quo. Tuck your tail between your legs and follow along like a nice little slave. It's way easier to do that, but it's also way more uncomfortable in the long end. It's way more uncomfortable because you're going to get stiffed like everybody else is. Of course, then you can also justify complaining about him while you get drunk at the local bar with your other lemming friends, and everyone can just whine on everyone's shoulders about how horrible their boss is with no one taking responsibility for their life. He's only horrible if you allow him to be in your reality. I'm telling you, I know it sounds weird to some of you people, but you can do these things. You can have ten people all have the same boss. Nine people are dying on the vine because he's just an idiot. And he's just a slave driver and does all these things. And one person is like, whatever. I'm having a good day. You're like, what, dude? You know, the first thing we want to do is we want to corral them into our little clique of whiners and moaners so that he can point the finger along with us. Or we'll try to help him point the finger. And he doesn't want to go. And he's not as angry as you. Why is that? Because he's controlling his reality. Because the boss doesn't really exist. All of this is an illusion. You see? This is the thing. We get wrapped up in this illusion and we think it all matters. But none of it matters. None of it really matters. So play with your illusion. Don't don't allow your illusion to cause you despair because you forgot that you created it. Don't allow your illusion to cause you heartache because you refuse to control it even though you can. It's all an illusion. And we're vibrating on a physical level so we can't see it most of the time. Once you start meditating and go to a higher plane and vibrate at a higher plane, you can see this stuff disappear. I'm telling you, straight up. Because we create it. And then when you choose to in your meditation, you can come back down to this vibration and it all rematerializes. Okay? But what I've found lately for most people is the concept that it's all an illusion and none of it really matters really really helps when people are trying to control their daily activities as far as how it's going to work out for me today and you know don't make yourself wrong when you hit bumps in the road you know nobody's perfect you know like I tell everybody you know 40 years and I still I still hit roadblocks and I still have to sit back and, and I fortunately I have my wife point me back in sometimes if I can't do it. Sometimes I'll just mention something and she'll go, oh, hey, what about this? Do you need to tell this guy this? And I'll go, oh, that's right. Okay, so don't make yourself wrong when it doesn't work. Know that it won't work, but know that as a sign. Look, if you're doing all the right stuff, you're doing the techniques and everything. And at the very least, folks, you should be doing that happiness meditation every single day. Seriously. Because that's going to put out your happiness energy. And that energy is going to attract more happiness. And the more and more that you have that, the less and less crap you're going to have. Because there won't be any room for it. Okay? These are basics, and these are so easy, but you have to do it in order to prove it. You know what I mean? You have to do it. You can't just listen to it and go, oh, that's a nice concept, boy. You know, I wish I had time. What do you mean you wish you had time? Don't do that to yourself. This is all your creation. You have all the time in the world. You have eternity. In a physical level, you, you don't have much time. Okay, fine, whatever. You know what, you got 120 years, 150 years, something like that. 
look, you're not physical. You're spiritual. You're playing around with this physical stuff. You have eternity to, to make changes. And you're going to come back. You know, you, know you, you, you wait and you, you procrastinate and you do all this stuff now. You can come back and do it again. No big deal. We've been doing it forever. But do yourself a favor. And start making yourself happy on a daily basis, no matter what it is. Look, okay, you don't want to take 15 minutes, then get something on your phone that makes you smile. Okay, we're all addicted to these phones now. God, save me. We're all addicted to cell phones now, so you probably have one. And look, let's say, for instance, you've got a 10-minute break at work or whatever, and you've got a picture of, a, of a, your grandson or... Uh, nephew or whatever all right picture of a cat picture of a flower whatever that makes you smile then take the time take that five or ten minutes and look at that and just be alone with it and just be happy with it and really feel what that does to you feel the happiness feel the emotion I'm telling you folks this is how you do it. This is how you start. And do it every day. Do it every day. And get happy about it. And get grateful that you can do that for yourself. And that you're on the right path. Just start making yourself feel better. Because if you're not happy, if you don't feel happy with what you're doing, then why, why are you doing it? And I mean everything. Your relationships, your job, uh, whatever. You're making something for yourself and you don't like it. Stop it. You know, you're doing something because you think you have to because of the old school programming and it doesn't please you. Stop it. Stop it. We're not, we're not physical beings. We have no one to answer to on a physical level. No one. On a spiritual level, we're all connected to the source. We're all of God. And because we're all of God... We all manifest 24-7. Dig it. Use it. Control it. You don't have to control it. But understand that if you're not living the life that you deserve or that you want to live, it's because you're not controlling it. So now what? Now that you know that, now what are you going to do? Okay? So before I end here, um, let me tell you a little bit about what's going on this week. Uh, let's see here. Uh, this Saturday at 11 o'clock, 11 to 1230, I will be hosting a meetup at my place using the law of attraction uh, with your workplace. And uh, it's a lot of what we talked about uh, tonight. And it's some really cool stuff. And uh, I got a special guest to... Uh, have some first-hand uh, information and experiences. Uh, the 26th of this month, I'm going to be at the Learning Light Foundation in Anaheim from 2 to 5 and doing a uh, three-hour workshop, uh, Law of Attraction 101. We're going to get down and dirty and uh, dispel all the myths and everything and even teach some techniques that people can uh, go home with. And everybody that shows up is going to get a free CD uh, with my uh, latest creation, my latest creation, my first creation. Um, it's a custom uh, hypnosis relaxation MP3. It's about 15 minutes long, and I have had nothing but great reviews from it. I designed it so that you could take it, you put it on your phone, you do it at lunch, do it at breaks, do it whatever. And it shuts down your conscious mind and allows you to relax and let the positive energy come in and the negative energy go out. And everybody loves it. So everybody that comes out to Learning Light on the 26th will get that for free. And uh, we've got uh, new stuff coming out uh, next month. But uh, Halloween's almost here. I hope you guys have an awesome Halloween if you don't listen to this broadcast again. Um, this week is uh, going to...
going to be an awesome week for me. I hope it's an awesome week for you. And I hope that you just start making yourself happy. Please imagine if 90% of the world spent 80% of the day trying to make themselves happy. What would that look like? What would that look like? All right. Well, that's it for today's show, folks. I hope you enjoyed it and are a little closer to living life on your terms. Join me next week, won't you, for another mind-blowing show about the truth of reality. Until then, my reality is not your reality. What are you creating today? Thank you.